And we're back. Today's agenda, I'm gonna start going over this whole thing right here. Seeing, uh, make sure everything's tight, everything's lubed, I'm gonna change oil, plugs, probably adjust valves too. So, let's go ahead and dive into this thing right now and uh, hopefully, don't really need anything other than regular oil maintenance, but we're gonna find out. All right, got her all jacked up and found one problem immediately when I'm jacking it up. I noticed this headlight right here start wobbling a little bit. Look. And I was like, hmm, that's odd. So then, upon further inspections, would you look at that right there? Shock mount cracked. And no, that is not my weld. These mounts came from, I don't remember the name of them now, but. They came from air and look at that, completely loose. So that's why I'm going over it. Cause within the first two minutes of jacking it up, I already found that issue, which I am glad I found now, instead of going down the track and the shock fall off of it or anything dumb. So I'm gonna have to take that apart. I'll break out the MIG. I'll MIG that back on there. Check the other side, make sure it's not stressed now from it doing that. But I'm not gonna do that today. I still got another or a little over a week for the uh, test and tune. So right now I'm gonna climb up underneath of it. Hope I don't find nothing else. All right, so now we're up under here. Check the trans lines. I don't see nothing dripping and leaking. Nothing there. That's a big plus. And here's an even bigger plus for me, because everybody knows I have issues out on shafts. And then I had uh, Walter Racecraft. Got me this one right here, made it. Look at that. No more drips from the tail shield, seal. Look at that. No more wiggle wobbles going on like you used to. And it's actually in a trans, how it's supposed to be. Big, big, big plus. Now back at the rear. Straps are tight. U joint didn't have any play or anything in it. Another great big plus there. And then I started going over like all the suspension here too. I've just been going around checking all the welds. Just wanna make sure nothing's cracking. That's one reason why I have not painted any of this junk yet since I've uh, got it on there. Is I just wanted to make sure that everything was going to be okay. And I also see right here, I'm going to have to do some touching up right, right there. So I'm going to have to finish welding that around. Now this stuff like that, I'm gonna wait till this winter so I can get it up on the lift because it'd be a lot easier than sitting here trying to do it. Plus I wanna TIG all that cause all this stuff here is chrome molly. So I'm gonna TIG it and I do not know how to TIG. All right, now I'm running my fuel lines too, just checking, making sure she dirty. But I just wanna make sure I don't have any leaks anywhere. So far, everything under here has been dry as a bone. Humongous pluses there. As you can see, that's my old upper link mounts there. You see one thing I'm gonna get, I'm gonna take care of right here now, is right there. Didn't notice that until just now either, but that's my main battery line going down and hitting the any roll bar there so I'm gonna have to figure out a way damn that damn bolt right here is loose and the strap right there that one so I'm gonna have to tighten that up too I don't know where I'll put that one at I'm gonna have to put a another holder here somewhere 
keep that up off of that. I don't want that rubbing on air, potentially drag through it. Cause this stuff right here is good for when I do drag week two next year. Cause she's gonna get some mileage put on her. So that keeps rubbing on her and it rubs through and grounds out. And yeah, that'd be the end of my week. Might even burn the car down. It's hard to tell. All right, I'm gonna slowly move my way forward here. Been running the brake lines, checking in. Make sure I don't have anything leaking on any of those. And so far, all of them are fine. So. And so far, transmission's completely dry. All down here. Sensor's not leaking there. Same might have a little drip right here at the drain plug right there. So I might have to snug that up a little bit. Let's move up to the oil pan. All right, moving up. Now, that little bit of oil you see on the starter and all, <coughs> I'm all right. I already know about all that. That's where it's, when it has the mufflers on it and I'm getting in it, it's got back pressure. Pushes the dipstick up. I need to put a locky one in it, I guess. Because I'm sure the rings got a nice little gap in them for the nitrous. Um, all torque rear bolts are tight. No leaks coming out of front. Like I said, the pan here is a little wet on the uh, trans. But I am hoping that that is not major. I mean, you see she's got some road grime on her hair, but I'll clean all that junk off. I don't see dipstick leaking up top here. None of that. It's a big plus. Oil pan is wet on the bottom. I'm hoping that is just from, like I said, that dipstick. Doesn't really look like the rear main is leaking, but it does look like the back of the oil pan might be a touch bit wet back here. You see it? But motor's coming out this winter anyway. So I'm not really too worried about all that junk. Um, you know what? I probably haven't done it yet. Probably should just check the mounts on the, the bolts on the motor mounts too. Let me see. And then I'm gonna move over to the front suspension. Nice on my second ago. Got this L cheapo, I don't know what it is, right? Spectre dipstick in it. And as you can see, even the plugs get a little bit of oil on the mist. It does come back here a hair bit. And here. Cause, which is weird. Mainly does it with the mufflers on it. Take mufflers off, never pushes the dipstick up out of it like that. You leave the mufflers on it, you run the crap out of it, pushes it up. Good figure. All right. So I took a peek at all my hairpins, everything else. I'm gonna make sure everything was tight on my clevises, the jam nuts. So there was a couple jam nuts in the rear that was loose. Um, one other thing I do want to do is I'm going to grease the kingpins in it. Just because I haven't done it in a while. <clears throat> one, two, two. Checked all my bolts on those. And the biggest bolts I want to check are these. I don't know if anybody's out there got a street ride and got this Vega box and like this one. I don't know if it's because it's, it's J-Pan model. I don't know what the deal is. But anyway, these bolts have backed out on me two times already, which is weird. And I always have to end up adjusting the worm gear in it because I'll start getting a little slop and then I'll have to adjust worm gear a little bit. And then, like I said, I know eventually, like I said, these came loose twice. They got locked tight on them now. They weren't loose this time. And I'll probably put a few hundred miles on it since last time I tightened them up. So I'm hoping that that fixed that. And I haven't really had to adjust the worm gear much since then. So I'm hoping just these backing out the way we're doing is giving that a little bit of slop in there. But I guess we'll see. Now to the inside. Yes, I am going around this whole thing here to make sure. Cause I'm going to make sure my bolts up in here were tight. Never have checked them since I put this thing together now. My bolts here are tight, my set pin was tight. My firewall was tight. Um, you know what I didn't check while I was underneath the car? The pedal on a mash cylinder rod. 
better do that. Um, what else is in here I can check besides that right there? I already know my belts are tight. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot more inside the car that really needs to be checked up on here on this one. But <clears throat> we'll see. You know what I do want to do while I'm here? When I get back or anything, I'm going to check these seat bolts. Doesn't feel loose, but I just want to make sure. They're not, I have them on an eighth inch plate underneath there and bolted through it. All right, I was talking about my seat. This is what I was talking about. See how to bolt it here and bolt it here. And I use this eighth inch plate to sandwich the body in between it. And up top, there's eighth inch plate. Just to try to help me out some. I did it there. I also did it right there by the roll cage. And that's where my uh, lap belts bolt to in the middle. And then on the outside, I bolt them right directly to the frame. So that's all fine there. They were extra tight. So, so far, it's not, not terrible. Tell you what. So far, not bad. Shock mount is the uh, worst casualty I have to mess with right now. That's a 20 minute job. Pop the headlight off, pop the shock off. I'll put a nice little MIG up on that one. And like I said, I can make that one, but the um, rest of the suspension, no. It's chrome molly, so I'm gonna have to have a TIG. So I'm gonna get up on lift. And I'll probably end up buying a TIG eventually and learn how to TIG. But for right now, I'll probably have to get somebody to just come over, bring your TIG over and um, TIG those couple bars up there for me real quick. And we'll see if we can get that all cleaned up. And then while it's up on lift, I'll uh, paint underneath the car. I'll have to repaint this bracket. I'm have to grind it down there. Do a bit of welding on that. And I'll touch up all the frame underneath when I go to paint it. Makes it a lot easier once I get up in the air on the lift. That's it. One of the reasons why I haven't done it yet. But the other reason is, is like, like I was showing you. You know what I mean? A couple little spots there that need to be touched up. And I'll have uh, somebody who knows how to make come and touch that up for me. So this way that's 100% done. And then, uh, turn the valves on this thing real quick. <clears throat> And then I'll change oil on. I'm gonna clean that oil pan up too. Where you seen that oil on it? I'm sure it's gonna come back because that dipstick's gonna push. Hopefully, once I redo the motor, I don't know what I put the ring gap at yet when I redo the motor. But once I do, hopefully that kind of fixes that. Plus, I might break down and buy a good dipstick, a locking one, so it doesn't do that. I uh, almost thought about putting a PCV valve in it, and because I have the accumulators on it, I don't really know how well they work. So, PCV valve might be better. I'll put that in there and maybe still, I don't know if you run the accumulators PCV valve together. If anybody knows it, pop it down below, let me know. Cause um, it's my first time ever even running accumulators. Normally I always run PCV valve, call it day and I've never had an issue. But this one kind of seems to want to push dipstick. I had a Malibu years ago, he used to push dipstick out of it on the trans. Never would leak, but every pass. It'd be up an inch. Go figure. But I never worry about it because it never leaked. So let's take a look at these valves real quick. All right, so I went ahead and ran this side here. And they were actually all really good. Weren't bad at all. The oil that's in here is that Brad Penn 50 weight. That's what I run in this thing. Um. It's not terrible looking, I guess. But I don't know how many miles it's got on it, though. Not many. I can tell you that right now. It does not have many miles on it at all. That wheel doesn't. I, it's got two passes on that track, on that oil. Maybe. Maybe 150 miles on oil. Maybe. Probably pushing it. All right, so that's day one of our maintenance there. I got a couple little things done. Like I said, tighten those rear um, bars up. 
the jam nuts, they're real loose. Got those tightened. Tightened up all the hairpins in the front, all that. Still got to uh, grease it and all. Got the valves there done. Uh, and then pretty much just went over everything. I made sure everything was tight. Like I said, the seat belt bolts, trans mount, um, everything on the rear, everything in the front suspension. Everything was good, like I said, other than jam nuts. Everything's good. Worst case scenario is that, or not scenario, but the worst thing, like I said before, is that stupid shock mount. Other than that, she's getting her. So this is gonna be part one. I'll make another video when I uh, drop the oil out of it. Cause you see, it's a little dark. So, I mean, I'm pushing it if I say it's got 150 miles on it. it. Has two passes on it, maybe 150 miles. But I did have that issue where I'm a dummy. And I was jetting the carburetor down cause it was humid out. I was trying to lean it out. I grabbed my jets, which is on this. Right here, and it may be an idiot I am, when I had a ton of ram on it. I got a whole bunch of these racks. If I could remember correctly, and I would actually read what I put on the tape next to them, rather than reading what's actually on the jet. Because when I had a ton of ram, I was drilling some of these out when I was playing around with a ton of ram, trying to get it jetted right. So, me, thinking I was grabbing a set of 70s up top. No, I checked them. They said 70s on a jet. They run rich, extremely rich, they're terrible. Oh, pull the jets back out. Guess what? They weren't 70s at all. They're 80s. I had drilled them, these out to 80s from 70s. Completely forgot about it. One million percent forgot about it. So, if you're gonna draw your jets out like I did, remember it. Don't be like me. Don't go and sling them in there. And if I thought about it, if I'd actually looked at the hole in the jet, I would realize, hmm, it's not big for 70. I may wanna check this. But no, I looked at the side, said 70. Boom, threw them in. Took it out, ran terrible. It was getting, I think like 10.5, low to one, cruising, AFRs. And I was like, man, how am I leaning it out? It's getting fatter, this ain't making sense. Snatch the back part, pull jets back out, and I'm like, hmm, that's when I realized, holes look a little big, you might wanna, we check these, see what they are. Whoop, that's when I found out they're 80s. So now it actually does have 70s in it now. But now I'm gonna go back up to a 74, I think is what I'm gonna put in it. I think it's what I took out, 74, 76s. Throw those back in it, in the primaries. So it's cool out now. So it's gonna need a little more fuel and plus I'm gonna be spraying it. So, right there. So we're gonna keep, uh, make sure we got a little fuel in her. If anything does worry me, a little bit. It's only a hundred shot. I don't much put a hundred shot on a lawnmower. But the only thing that does worry me a little bit, it's got that old cheapy chrome mechanical pump on it. It does hold six PSI on motor. Wide open. I don't know, I ain't got a gauge in the car. Gauge is out next to the car right? I mean, I guess it could go down track, climb out, look in. But, so I'm hoping it stays under no less than four PSI when I'm spraying it. Well, I know for sure. Nope. Shoots fireball out, must piss down now, now. <laughs> well, that's one little lean on me. But, we'll chance it. I mean, I ran 125 on a bone stock mechanical pump. And when I put a gauge on it, going through the traps, it was at one PSI. And I was on cast pistons. I never hurt that motor. And I ran 30, 35 bottles through that car. That's a lot of nitrogen, 125. To use a bottle. Um, I'll keep on this one. I'm gonna go spray it right now. Like I said, this winter, when the shop's up, get the lift in, weld all that suspension up, and paint it all on each car, snatch motor out, freshen motor up. I'll have videos on all doing all that too. And then um, I'm contemplating it, 
don't hold me to it. Depends on how deep my pockets get this winter, how many side jobs I get. I may end up taking a trans out, putting another one in. I want one with a good bell on it for anyway, because it's a fiberglass car. Converter comes, flywheel comes apart. Something comes apart, it's coming through with me. So I'd rather have one with a good bell, but I want to put a brake in it also. And then I'm going to swap out the converter in it for a different one. The one that's in there now, I can do foot brake 2800 out of it, and that's it. That's why it's kind of a dog out of hole. Best 60 I've gotten is 152 in this car, and it's kind of pigging out of hole. But that is a big maybe on the whole trans deal. Maybe. I'm trying to watch out with that shop going up and everything else right now. Pockets got real shallow. I mean, I like to put my hands on pockets and it's like right here. So, uh, what else we got going on this winter with this thing? That's it. Other than I'm going to weld a hitch on the back of it. And the reason why? Because I am getting on the waiting list for Drag Week of next year. Long as it ain't out in Nevada. Something dumb. If it stays Midwest, I'm in. Uh, so, you'll see this thing on Drag Week next year. Like I say, if it's not... 25,000 miles away. So we'll get that on there. I'm gonna go put this in, I looked, it fits in the hot rod class. I'm gonna slam it in the hot rod class. Should do okay in it. There was only three cars in the hot rod class this year. I think it was when I watched. The quickest run run like 1170s or something to pick up. Uh, so I should be competitive in it as long as the car stays together. Motor's gonna be fresh and all. Hopefully it stays together. I won't be spraying, I was running on motor, on drag week. Um, I don't even know how much I'll actually spray this car over all this time. I just know next weekend I'm gonna hit with a hunter. Hopefully get that 999 pass. I would love to finish the year off with that 999 pass. So, keep watching, man. We'll have some more of this whole maintenance junk going up. Next Sunday you'll see us at the track. And I also have uh, videos. I'll put up with my wife's car too because she's running it also next Sunday. Just keep it up, man. We're getting there. We're going to get faster and faster.